Now at this point you might think, okay, I already have something that can be simulated within Vortex. And so if I go and press the test button at the bottom of the window, I'm going to see that I am going to start to see some simulation within the tool, but maybe not quite the type of simulation I was expecting. The wheel that we have here on the machine just falls through the grid that we have in the editor with no end in sight. So what is happening at this point is that we've associated the part to a, an element of the graphics. Now that being said, that part currently has no collision geometry, so it doesn't know how it should collide with the grid that we have here to simulate ground. It also doesn't know anything about weight or other parameters of the actual part. So what I'll do here is I'm going to right click on the part inside of the uh, explorer tree and then I get a submenu to create collision geometry. Now there's many different options that are displayed here. We can tell Vortex to figure out what is the best fit geometry. So that's the first item here at the top. Now it's going to analyze the shape of the graphics that we've provided and determine what should be the best shape to be used to represent this part. Now if we do want to choose ourselves which geometry we want to use, we can actually go in in this list and pick one of these elements. Of course, you know, choosing a box for a wheel might not really make sense, um, but you might want a sphere instead of a cylinder, or you might want to have a convex mesh. So you can take full control if you want, or you can tell Vortex to figure out what it thinks is the best shape. Now in this case, if I go ahead and choose best fit, I'm going to see that I have a cylinder that's been created around that part, around the graphics for the wheel, to represent how this wheel should collide with the environment. Now if I go back and try to run this once again, I'm going to hit the test button and I'm going to see that now the wheel is stopping on the grid because its collision volume is being used to figure out that it needs to stop and not go further down than the grid that we have here on screen. Now that being said, uh, if I start to try to interact with the wheel a little bit, I'm going to see that I still need to define more of its properties before I can have the wheel be fully working as you would expect a wheel to. So we have a tool within the Vortex Studio Editor that allows you to bring the wheel and uh, exert different forces on it. So I'm going to use the Alt key along with the left click of the, my mouse to be able to drag this wheel and move it around. Now we're seeing that the wheel is sliding across the ground based on the forces that I exerted on it and it's also not um, exhibiting very wheel-like behavior. It's kind of rolling around in a strange way. That's because currently there's a number of parameters that pertain to the mass and the mass distribution of that part that have not been set. I'm going to save here my mechanism once again and then double click on the wheel part inside of the Explorer to go and define these parameters. So once I double click on the wheel part I'm going to see that I'm going to have access to only that subcomponent of the machine and then I'm going to have access to a number of fields to be able to specify how it's going to be uh, behaving and so how heavy is it and what type of material it is and how is the weight distributed. So first clicking on the part section of the Explorer, I'm going to see here I can first specify a mass for that wheel. So let's make it a 30 uh, kilogram wheel. Then we have parameters to be able to specify the center of mass offset and the inertia tensor. Now of course each of these can be specified manually. You can go in and enter where is the exact center of mass offset if you have that calculated for that part out of the real machine design same thing with the inertia tensor, or we have a, a button that can be used to be able to automatically have Vortex compute the inertia and the center of mass. So if I press that button, we're going to see that it calculated the entire matrix here as well as the center of mass offset. Now to visualize what that might look like, I can actually right click here on the part and check off the box that says inertia to be able to see that uh, red sphere or, um, appear on top of the wheel. 
So that's showing me that I have weight that's distributed along the wheel, and it's really close in terms of the shape of the wheel. The other element that I'm going to be defining for that wheel is what is going to be its material type. So I can do that by selecting the collision geometry that I created for that wheel. And so now in the right hand side under properties, I'll see a number of fields, but the one I'm currently interested in is material, which is currently set to default. Uh, default is a material in Vortex that has no friction, uh, so that would explain why the wheel was just flying across the ground earlier when I exerted some forces on it. So what I'll do here is use the drop down to go and select wheel for the material type. This list of materials is actually configurable and so we have a number of different examples of material tables that are specified and provided with Vortex. Right now I'm loading uh, the very basic default table for these materials uh, but we'll see as we do further tutorials and exercises that it is possible to have a much larger list of materials defined within a simulation. Now once I've specified these different elements I'm going to save my changes. Uh, I'm always just using the very quick control S shortcut to do that and I'm going to close that part as we've specified all of the correct parameters for that element. Now if I go back within the editor go back to test mode and then go in and grab this part I'll see that it's going to give me a better behavior but still not quite the correct one because it's still sliding off into the distance and it's going to keep doing that for some time. Now that's because I've currently specified what material I'm going to have for my part but I have not specified what material the grid should be here within the editor. The place to do that is when you right click in the workspace by choosing the grid menu. So I'm going to come in here and select grid and see that I'm going to uh, be able to specify that the grid should be used as terrain and then specify which material I would like to use for that terrain and I'm going to specify ground here out of that default list of materials. Now if I try to run this once again grab this and make it roll around well okay I was kinda lucky it fell back onto itself but otherwise it is giving me a much more wheel like behavior including taking into, into, into consideration the mass of that wheel, how that mass is distributed, and then what kind of friction should we expect when that wheel falls onto the ground by looking at the material that's been assigned to the wheel and then the material that's been assigned to the ground.